In ancient Vietnam, the ruling family's robes, much like those of the emperors of China, were a symbol of grandeur and power. But decades of war and the passage of time meant the imperial robes and the skills needed to make them were slowly being lost. That is, until 1994, when overseas Vietnamese Trinh Bac returned to visit his old family temple. It was a trip which launched him on the enormous task of preserving the emperor's old clothes. Susan Yu reports from Hanoi. I have to do import the looms. That's the main, main point. Normally they are between 18 and 20. And they are the best. And an old lady was very moved and had never been able to see a real gown. In a small guest house centered in Hanoi's old quarters, Trinh Bac is trying to revive a piece of Vietnam's history. I got a chance to meet the old embroiders who had um, offered the skill to the royal court in Hue before. And when I met them, they were very old and frail, and uh, they couldn't do the work anymore, but they could remember the old ways. And so I thought if we didn't uh, take advantage of the situation, they might be gone forever. The art of imperial weaving is on the verge of disappearing. Ed Bach has made it his mission to revive this delicate tradition. The passion all began six years ago. The first time I came back uh, to Vietnam to visit the family pagoda outside Hanoi, um, I found that it, it, it was kind of run down, and especially the cloth banners on the outers there. And so um, we tried to renovate the pagoda as all of us have been doing. And so I went around to look for embroiders to, uh, to do that. That wasn't easy. To make matters worse, there was no record of the techniques used in producing the fineries that draped Vietnam's royalty. I started going around to meet with um, members of the royal families who, who are living abroad who have real gowns. They are very badly uh, damaged now. I don't know why. But then also I went to the museums, both abroad and in Vietnam, especially in Vietnam. Um, and I look at uh, those things and I, I realize that there are, besides the skill of embroidery, um, also the weaving skills too, are the kinds of fabrics that, you know, we used to have so beautiful fa fabrics, uh, locally made, I mean, mean, meaning made in Vietnam, and now we don't have them anymore. The artist also discovered that traditional weaving and designs had given way to Western methods and styles to cater to the mass market. So how do you try and reverse that? Bach came up with a special project to replicate Vietnam's imperial robes and accessories. And with some financial help, he was on his way to preserving a part of Vietnam's past. By trade, I'm a guitarist. I performed a lot back then before. And so my money accumulated up from my performing years. And I also sold my car, <laughs> so you know, that's how I came up with, um, with the money. And along the way, there's um, a foundation in New York, uh, the, um, uh, the Albert Gunstadter Family Foundation in New York, and the Swiss Embassy in Hanoi, you know, um, sponsored about like three gowns. The goal is to produce more than two dozen gowns and accessories. Bach estimates it costs roughly four to five thousand U.S. dollars for one craftsman to produce one gown. That's including labor and made-to-order materials. First, very fine silk fabric must be produced for the intricate imperial designs, which are copied from tracings and old photographs. It's called the battered silk thread, and we have to make them to, and so from start to from the start to the end of this, I think it takes about like four to four and a half months. But you know, like for for something more uh, serious, like this um, this grand audience gown of a prince, for example, this you see how much work must to be put into this, especially to make these 
uh, scales and everything, all the details. And this one m takes uh, around like eight months. But for a grand audience of a king, of an emperor, it takes normally uh, up to a year to make. And this is where Bach's imperial-like fabric is made. He's commissioned this weaving factory in Van Phuc village in Ha Dong province to produce the high-quality material. That calls for a loom with 1,200 needles and nearly 3,000 vertical threads. I think we can weave between 30 to 60 centimeters a day. That's compared with mechanical looms that weave 6 to 8 meters a day. At least 20 meters of fabric is needed for one gown. That makes it clear the project will take some time, but it's become a labor of love for all those involved, like factory owner Troy Van Mao. Uh, all of these techniques and fabrics have been discontinued since 1945. So what we're trying to do is very hard for weavers to relearn it. They all like it and are very happy about the project. I also have a permit to go to other provinces and villages to study and search for new samples of the old cord fabrics. Today, Bach leaves for an inspection of one of about six embroidery factories outside of Hanoi. It's here in the northern provinces, where traditional weavers and embroiders were called to serve the imperial court. And as times have changed, so too have the skills for embroidery. Bach says out of the nearly 160 embroiders interested in the project, 28 young people were selected over their older peers. Most of them are used to the kind of making uh, quick cash out in the market. And so they could do the job, a good job, for like a few days, but then their hands would go back to the old ways and it becomes sloppy. So most of the weavers, uh, I, I mean embroiders now, are actually in the late teens. You know, um, they were trained uh, you know, in a younger age, and then now, you know, normally they're between 18 and 20. And they are the best, actually. And to me, it's the better part of it is it means that this art will last longer. And they, they, um, and they are very eager to learn. This young craftsman is one of them. He says it takes two to three days to embroider one pattern. But that's a minor detail, considering their work aims to foster preservation and appreciation of a long-forgotten art. After this project is finished, if we still work together, we'd like to continue. But that will all depend on demand and if the market wants it. This renaissance comes at an important time for Vietnam, which just celebrated the 25th anniversary of liberation and a more promising future with the outside world. While Vietnam focuses on its economic and political future, some will be literally looking at the country's past. As testimony, the final collection of 29 imperial robes and accessories will be permanently displayed at the Royal Fine Arts Museum in Hue, Vietnam's cultural capital. A few completed gowns were displayed in the imperial city of Hue in April as part of national celebrations of Vietnam's culture and traditional arts. And once the whole project is completed, the exhibition will hit the road. As for Trin Bach, where will he end up when the project is finished? I'm a painter and I'm a, a guitarist. What I plan to do is I um, might record all of these things, all the steps and all the techniques and everything into a book so people can know. And then um, if the work requires me to to stay with it, then I'll stay, but I definitely have to go back to my real life. Susan Yu on the painstaking work of Trin Back and his army of weavers and embroiderers. And the collection of robes will eventually go on tour, first to Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi, then overseas to Belgium and the United States. And that's all we have time for on Focus Asia. Next week, we'll have a special report from North Korea in the run-up to the historic North-South Summit in Pyongyang.